Hey there do-it-yourself technicians, you've seen them, forlorn dusty TVs in the foyer of a business. A great idea that died. I've got a way you can revive your display for under $100. We've all seen those big TVs out in public places that display a rotating slideshow of images and videos, usually showing ads in places like shopping centres and department stores. Those things are expensive, and for good reason in many cases. They're often created by giant companies like Val Morgan, the same company who do the cinema advertising, and they use expensive commercial grade TVs, sometimes in big arrays over multiple screens. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to walk you through the process of building your own basic version that you can set up yourself for less than 100 Australian dollars, plus the cost of the TV. The TV just needs a HDMI input. You can buy a 24 inch TV brand new for $150 at the moment, or a quick look on something like Facebook Marketplace, and I found multiple 42 inch TVs for $50 each. Many TVs of this sort have an option to plug in a USB memory stick or SD card in the side that you can set up like a digital photo frame displaying a slideshow of images. I've seen this at a lot of places, and it works. Until it doesn't. The power goes out, no one could be bothered going through the menus to find the folder with all of the images, or they can't find the remote, or the batteries are flat. I've been there. I've seen the TV sitting switched off in many a foyer, including places I've worked. That's why I decided to come up with a new plan. Something inexpensive. Something that usually just requires the TV to be turned back on again when the power fails. And something that can be remotely updated. No more climbing up on chairs or ladders to replace the memory stick or SD card when it's time to make a change. I rediscovered this, a Raspberry Pi. A tiny little computer with so many possibilities that it's hard to find a use for. Until, of course, you find a use for it. For me, for many years, it was a solution without a problem. I simply hadn't found a use for a tiny little underpowered computer. I mean, yes, you could install some sort of desktop operating system on it, like Linux or Windows, but it was always going to be too slow. Now I'd found a problem it could solve. The Raspberry Pi was developed in the UK with the first release in early 2012. The project was originally designed to promote teaching basic computer science in schools and it took off both there and in the hobbyist robotics market. As of December 2019, over 30 million Raspberry Pis have been sold worldwide. The name Raspberry Pi was chosen as a nod to the old tradition of naming computer products after fruit. And Pi is actually a reference to the Python programming language. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B 3 Plus and it sells for 60 to 80 Australian dollars. It has a 1.4 gigahertz processor, one gig of RAM, Wi-Fi 5, 802.11 AC, Bluetooth, HDMI, Ethernet, and four USB ports, as well as a range of other optional accessories. It boots from and uses as storage a micro SD card and runs from a micro USB power source admittedly a hefty 5.1 volt, 2.5 amp input. This little fellow up here is its new little brother, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. It has a one gigahertz processor, 512 meg of RAM, Wi-Fi 4 or 802.11n, Bluetooth, mini HDMI, micro USB for connections, and a similar range of optional accessories. This one is a bit more fiddly as you need a mini HDMI to HDMI converter or cable and only one micro USB port to connect things to. On the other hand, it has the huge advantage of a bare board costing only 20 Australian dollars. Or you can get a kit with a mini HDMI adapter and a micro USB to USB converter cable as well as a case for just 45 Australian dollars. Depending on your use case, you might only need the kit once for setup and possibly troubleshooting. And then you could just buy the bare boards for the finished product, especially if you're creating multiple displays. 
I personally have been using the Pi 3 Model B Plus for development and then deploying on 3B Pluses and 0Ws. Next week I'll walk you through the software side of things and how to set up your Raspberry Pi, including a fully downloadable version that's ready to go. Question of the day, are you familiar with the Raspberry Pis? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older episodes you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel down here, or our mailing list up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.